guns who steal the show. Instead, a battle-hardened veteran wins the 17th stage. The Tour de France coming up in Toyota World Sports. Good evening. A great day for Australia at the Tour de France coming up in a moment. But first, Serbia and Croatia have resumed normal sporting... Countdown to Sunday's Paris finish continues on the Tour de France and after nearly three weeks of torture the main aim for the five Aussies remaining in this race is to simply cross the finish line in the Champs-Élysées. You know we can really be proud of the achievements of the five Aussies. Each has had a major role to play in this year's tour and one man who's had special interest is national road coach Heiko Salfiedel who was there to greet the riders as they crossed the finish line after yesterday's stage. Heiko Salzfiedel's visit to Freiburg lasted no more than a couple of hours. Enough time to welcome home Australia's representatives in the Tour de France. The performances has put the national road coach on a new wave of excitement. I'm so excited to see this boys finishing this tour and it looks after surviving today's day, it looks like all five are going to finish this tour. And for the first year of their participation, especially for Robbie, Hank and Stuart O'Grady, I think that's an incredible result. Salzfiedel's plans are to one day enter a fully-fledged Australian team in the Tour de France. And if current trends continue, the signs of success are encouraging. Where do we go from here? Always up where? Up, uh, uphill. And I think even when we watch this Tour de France 1997, I can already, always see the Australians being on the top of the world at the Sydney Olympic Games in the year 2000. Even if a lot of people say, ah, we're not going to win a medal at the Olympics, I think these guys have proven if, if you survive this Tour de France here and if you're able to make good results with it in the Tour de France, that is, I can't get higher. Yeah? Yes, a very excited Heiko Salzwedel there and things are looking up for Australian road cycling leading up to the Sydney 2000 Olympics. Let's have a look at yesterday's stage results now and a great victory there for Christophe Manjean ahead of Frank Vandenbroek and Richard Varonk posting another top five with Gianluca Pierrebon and Laurent Dufault rounding up the top five. As far as the GC is concerned, it's Jan Ulrich still on top, six minutes, 22 seconds ahead of Richard Varonk and Marco Pantani in third place, Fernando Escartin four and Abraham Alano five with Bjorn Rees dropping to seventh place and it doesn't look as though Bjorn will now make the top three into Paris, which is really a shame. And news this morning is that Bjorn has doubts about finishing today's stage into the town of Colmar. The riders will cross the Swiss-French border from Fribourg and will travel 218 kilometres before reaching Colmar here. A few storms around. It doesn't look too pleasant. It'll be awkward for the riders. Let's go to the action. Here's Paul Sherwin and Phil Lickett. Well, not a great day in forecast, but here they are, the fans of Jan Ulrich. They used to be Spanish and Danish. Now they're German. And the race now has a breakaway today, Paul. Interesting move this, 13 riders clear, uh, only one man per team. So that's a lot of teammates back in the main field to slow down the chase. But we are seeing the GAN team here because they've missed out and they're trying to close a gap of some three minutes. It's very strange to see the GAN team not attentive to those early moves because there were a lot of tacks in the early part of the race today. And they've got a very good sprinter in their midst, Frederic Moncassin. He will be looking for a victory, but having let that group go, they're obliged now to chase it down. Well, big Eros Poli, the biggest man in the race, the pile driver of the GAN team here. If anybody can pull them back, he can. He's been on the front now for the best part of an hour. And they're very willing to help out. He's certainly Stuart O'Grady and uh, the other Australian in this breakaway, Henk Vogels. They would like to get this gap closed. I don't know how they allowed so many riders to get off up the road without any one of their men in there, but they did. The telecom team are profiting by this. They have a man in the breakaway, but at the same time, they're sitting behind the GAN team looking after the man in the other. There is Reese on the right of Ulrich, or as we look at the television. And there, if they do come back together, then the rider in the green jersey, Zabel, will mix it with the best in Colmar. 
Certainly another rider who'll be looking for the victory there if they do catch this leading group of 13 riders will be your own Blylevens, who this year has managed to drag his body over the mountains and he'll be looking for a sprint victory before the end, I'm sure. A breakaway getting away today uh, on one of the small climbs and building a lead at one stage of six and a half minutes. And there is Sergei Uchikov on the front, left as we look. Oscar Kamazin, the highest placed rider in this breakaway. He slipped to 12th yesterday. He's now 36 minutes and 33 seconds off the race lead, but he's the best place in this breakaway. The second best placed rider is the American Bobby Julik. He lies 20th overall, but even in 20th place, you are more than an hour behind now. It's been a very tough Tour de France this year. The time gaps are absolutely phenomenal. And I feel nobody before the start of this Tour de France could have predicted that Bjarne Rees would be almost 20 minutes off the pace at the stage like this. And the Australians have a man up here too in Neil Stevens, the Festina rider. He was one of the riders. Here he comes through now with the hat on. And uh, Neil looking for a win. He would love a stage win. He's been a great teammate again to a man who has spearheaded his team, Richard Varenk. And now he used to be a member of the Onsay team, don't forget. And now he's switched across to Festina. He does seem to make the right moves, doesn't he? <laughs> well, certainly he's an aggressive boy. He likes to go away in the breakaways on days like this. Otherwise, if he isn't in the break, he sits at the front of the main field, dragging them along at 30, 40 miles an hour. Bobby Julik coming through now, looking better and better as this Tour de France gets longer. Uchikov trying to drag this breakaway to the finishing Colmar and make amends for the day he got disqualified for that irregular sprint where they gave the victory to Laurent Debien. And uh, the judge is really towing a very strict line on the Tour de France this year. Took the victory away from Uchikov. There's the main field, getting smaller and smaller. And uh, it's ever since we saw a picture of a horse running alongside the big bunch in the Tour of Spain a few years ago, it really seems to have caught on in just about every major cycle race in the world. Caught on a little bit too much in Paris Nice this year because, in fact, the horse got into the main field and split them in two. I remember that happening with Jan Ras once, and uh, Ras was in deep water with the commissaires. We're trying to cause confusion and split the race uh, because of a bolting horse. Back with the leaders of the tour, the chasers, and now we're back with the leaders of the tour by the look of it as they disappear into the cornfields. This is the back of the peloton. A lot of Kelme riders. They've had a great season, the Kelme team, but this year they haven't won the stage, and I don't think they will now. But their top man, uh, Fernando Escartin, is going to finish right up on the overall classification. Would you like to fly to Paris and see next year's tour live? Win two return tickets to Paris flying Cafe Pacific. Get your entry form from this issue of Bicycling Australia magazine. Also inside Bicycling Australia is your chance to win a Raceline Carbon Ultra 18 speed road bike plus a Raceline Extreme DH mountain bike. Total value of over $8,800. So get Bicycling Australia and send your entries to SBS Television. Well, the breakaway that went clear, 13 of them. The Gans tried to do it. They couldn't get closer. They gave up, so the TVM team have taken up the cudgel now. The Gans are helping them out, and the gap is coming down. Around about, uh, I suppose, 13 kilometres from the finish, Paul, and the latest time check is 2 minutes and 50 seconds. It's going to be touch and go for these leaders. Most well, certainly, the most important thing for the 13 men in the lead is not to start playing around, not to start to play tactical games, missing turns. They have to keep this fluid motion that they've had for the last 110 kilometres or so to make sure that they do stay clear, because the main field in the closing kilometres can go very fast indeed. Oscar Kamazin leading at the moment in front of Bobby Julik, the champion of Switzerland there, and the American anxious to keep this pace up. He's just done one turn and has come straight back up to push it a little bit more as he's joined by... Sergei Uchikov, the Russian who was disqualified in that sprint against Laurent Debien um, a few weeks, well, a week ago now. And this is Eitor Garmendia, who was in the long breakaway yesterday, which got wiped out. And Uchikov is a Ukrainian. I may have called him in Russian there, but that was a mistake. And then the Mercatoni Uno team also in here. This is Massimiliano Poddenzana, who won a stage last year in Villeneuve so low, and is now looking like he might, uh, well, one of the favours to win if it comes down to the line, Paul, for sure. Well, certainly. In fact, I think in that breakaway on that day, Neil Stevens was there too. And in fact, right, he was. into the town, he lost it going around one of the roundabouts, and that probably cost him the stage victory. Now, Neil Stevens, I think, would certainly love to get a stage victory in the Tour de France. He's been a professional for many long years now, always been at the service of others, and today for him to get a win would be magnificent. 
Well, you can see the grey skies here. The riders seem to have been pretty lucky with the way this uh, last few hours has been going. We've had heavy rain at the finishing line, but it's gone now, and it may have gone behind the race. Uh, it hasn't got them either. And so they're running down towards the finish, and the sun is beginning to peep through here on the finish. So it could make it a nice, safe arrival in Colmar. The man has won here the last two times we've visited this place in 1955 and 1957 was the great clown Roger Hassenforder. And he was a man who was a brilliant bike rider, but he had a habit of take, playing tricks on the riders. He would often go away in a breakaway, just like today, and then he would hide in a hedge, in a field, and behind a hedge. When the race went through and chased him down, he'd be sitting right behind them, laughing his head off. And he was a pretty good bike rider, though, Paul, just a little bit before your time. Just a little bit, Phil. I think I was about three at the time. <laughs> but looking at the main field now, you can see the TVM riders, who normally have the yellow jerseys on their shoulders, have disappeared from the front of the main field. And once again, it's the pink slips, the pink jerseys, I should say, of the telecom team at the front. Well, they came up earlier and weren't interested at all in chasing. That annoyed the TVM, who had sat behind the GAN team, so they came up and started chasing. But now it looks as though they've all more or less relinquished themselves to the fact that they are not going to catch up with this breakaway today. There we are, 10 kilometres to go now for the leaders. And this is a breakaway which uh, the like has been a long time coming this year in the Tour de France. A compilation of 13 riders, none with the chance of winning the yellow jersey, all with the chance of taking out the stage. Eric Decker, medalist in the 1992 Olympic Games, is sitting on the front for the Rabobank team. Now uh, Uchikov is taking over. Neil Stevens is just tucked in behind. The white jersey is the champion of Austria. That's George Tochnik, the only member of the German telecom team in this breakaway. We saw him smiling with his team manager before when the car came up to tell him that it looked like uh, the bunch weren't going to catch up. There's right. Christian Hen, sorry Paul, Christian Hen swinging off the front. They've got a tempo going, but they're not going to bring them back. I think basically they've switched off because the gap now has gone up to three minutes and all Telecom want to do is just get the main field to the finish line. In fact, the official time coming through at three minutes and ten seconds. So the impetus has gone out of the chase in the main field. All the Telecom team settling down. As far as we know, Bjorn Aris has passed a pretty tranquil day. There he is just behind the yellow jersey. Rumour this morning that he would only ride as far as the field and would probably retire from the Tour de France. I'm glad to see he hasn't. But even though the weather at the start was not too clever today, and now he's sitting there, he's passed a, a reasonably safe day. Perhaps he'll pull through his little problems and have a good last few days on the road to Paris. Now you can see the roads are wet. They're going into the area where the rain has just fallen. But the sun is shining brightly now, and so they should uh, find those rides uh, drying up very, very quickly indeed. And now it looks as if Peter Farazine from Lotto is going to be the first around this corner. Well, let's hope he gets around because it's a bit greasy to come into it at high speed, but they've all come around pretty safely. The Lotto team could do with a good result here. They've had a, one of those tours they really could do with forgetting the loss of Jamaluddin Abdu Jafarov, their big sprinter, because of that positive drugs test. They lost Joe Plankert, who finished second in the Paris uh, Roubaix this year. In fact, they only have three riders, four riders left in the race quite remarkable to see that the great lot of squad last year they were so proud to finish nearly all of their riders in this in the Tour de France and this year they've all fallen by the wayside including Andre Schmiel who normally is a very consistent rider indeed but you can see everybody watching themselves in the group behind now and this might be good for Farazine well he's a wily old professional rider is Peter Farazine he's been around a long time he knows uh, exactly what to do to win the stage he hasn't had one yet but he knows what to do, he's got the gap, he's leaving himself a long ride to the finish. Sometimes you see riders behind, because they're all on individual teams, will start arguing with one another, because they want one another to start taking up the chase. And until they get themselves organised, that this man might slip away. Well, it's very strange now because it's what's happening is certain riders are starting to make the effort, but there's no organization. In second position there, trying to chase is Vyacheslav Ekimov, and they've got Farazine at around about 75 yards. Well, Mongin really riding on the crest of a wave today after his win yesterday. He really is riding exceptionally well today, pushed on by the fact that he's almost a regional coming from the Vosges part of France, which is not too far from where we're sitting at the moment. The roads are starting to dry a little bit, so that bades well for the riders when they come into the streets of the city here. So Valazine and Valazine being joined by Mongin. The others are scrabbling across as well, but these five can get together. There might be something going here. Yatislav Ekimov from US Postal Service they're trying to go straight over the top there to keep the impetus in this leading group of five but you can see there is absolutely no cohesion at all and somebody else going down the right hand gutter 
And that, I think, is Neil Stevens, who's tried to go again. He darts off down by the crowd there. Falazai still digging deeply to try and get back in there. Was the five kilometer to go banner? As Steve-O, the Australian from Canberra, tries to get clear of the field. Good turn of speed from Neil, this one. I think he might well have got the gap at the moment because they've switched across the road there. Nobody knows if it's their turn to chase or not. And Steve-O, coming into the outskirts of the town now, has opened up a very good gap indeed. A look over his shoulder just to see what sort of damage this attack has done. And now what he has to do is concentrate on building up as big a gap as possible. Well, Australia have never won a stage in the Tour de France since Phil Anderson back in 1991. Anderson on the race this year, by the way, and working as a PR man. And he's got the gap, but they've reformed behind now, so he's really just got to keep on going because Neil has now committed himself uh, to the finish here. It's no good waiting for them now. He's not a sprinter in the calibre of some of the riders in that breakaway. This is all he could do. But once he gets away, if he can just get round one or two of these corners, he's taking it a little bit easy on that Ben Paul, though, and he could slip the field. So, Neil Stevens inside, three kilometres to go to the finish. He's never won a stage, he has come close. I remember him being very, very disappointed when he lost to Montpellier a few years ago, sir, behind Rolf Sorensen. He puts himself in these positions where victory is just around the corner and he doesn't make it. Let's hope he makes it now. Well, it's going to be a very long straight. Once he gets down to the, the bottom here, he's going to turn off, and then he will have a two-kilometre straight up to the finish line, and it's Podenzana, the man who was in the break with him last year, who's decided to take up the chase. Well, Podenzana will be committing suicide if he leads this lot across, because he won't have a sprint left to use anyway. Former double champion of Italy, Massimiliano Podenzana, has started the reaction. Uh, Uchikov, the wily little Ukrainian, is tucked into his back wheel there. Remember, he's the man that lost at Perpignan, although he was first over the line. But look at this gap. It is beginning to look as though it might be possible. Two kilometres to go for Neil Stevens. Well, it's a very long straight now for Stevens. He'll very soon see the finishing banner right up in front of him. It's a long straight, and he has opened up the gap now. And these last couple of corners, I think, are where he's opened it up. He looks over his shoulder now to see just exactly what the reaction is. The was a reaction by Vyacheslav Ekimov, but you can see there's no organization here. No. The riders are trying to go one at a time. There is Kamen's in, but I think it's too late. I think after all these years of trying, Neil Stevens has cracked it this time as Kamen's in tries for Switzerland. The champion starts the reaction. But they have made a lot of uh, mistakes here, slowing down. We saw Eric Decker wouldn't take up the running. And Neil Stevens may have made the move of the race here. And what a wonderful result that would be for the little popular man from Canberra. He was given the, given the order of Australia last year, which is one of the highest sporting honours you can get from your country for his services to cycling. And now it looks like he's going to deliver a victory in the Tour de France. Still a kilometre to go, Paul, but they are still disorganised. Well, now it's Toshnik on the front for the telecom team trying to do that if Steve-O could hang on for just a couple, well, one more minute, in fact, that's all it's going to take him to do this last kilometre. He's going to get the victory that he's been chasing throughout his professional career. One last look over his shoulder, and he must continue to concentrate. Garmendia now, who he rode alongside last year on the Onse squad, is taking up the chase, and moving into second position is Laurent Roux. So they are the two pursuers, but those legs now must be feeling very, very tired for Neil Stevens. We'll be soon into the countdowns on the boards, and they're all coming running at him at a big rush now. He's going to have to hang on. Don't look over anymore, Neil. Just put your head down and go for it, because there's no second place for you now. It's a win or nothing. Neil Stevens, who is a really popular rider, who turned professional back in 1985, as he now gets into the countdown, and he's going to ride them all the way to the line. This has been a brilliant move by Neil Stevens, and I think he believes he's going to do it. This is going to be one of the happiest moments of his sporting career. He's had some great tours to France, but now this is the one at last. In the twilight of his years, he's got one more season left in him, that's all. He wins the stage. Well done, Neil Stevens. Tremendous result here will be a very, very popular winner indeed. As indeed Kamazin comes over just behind him, and I think it was Vyacheslav Yekimov who got third over the line for the US Postal team. Well, there it is, uh, Neil Stevens, a true professional, zips up his racing jersey. Has this been Festina's race or not? Well done, Neil Stevens. One of the domestiques on Richard Varenk's team gets the win today. Well, here they come, and I must say they've taken their time. They've left the telecom team, who have literally come in at a canter. Almost anybody could have kept up over these last two kilometres. 
It's already three and a half minutes since Neil Stevens crossed the finishing line. Eric Zabel may or may not be interested in what will be only the 14th place as Christian Hen begins the sprint for the line now. Zabel is tucked in there nicely in third place, keeping out of trouble, but I think he's going to leave it to Christian Hen to finish it off for the telecom team. These riders in the Tour de France don't really worry about taking 14th place. Well, having said that, Zabel is going to have a go and stick just a couple of points. He's got Moncassin on his back wheel, but Zabel gets 14th on the day. Well, if at first you don't succeed, just keep on trying. That's Neil Stevens' motto in the Tour de France, and tonight it succeeded. Well, you know what mums are like. Jan Ulrich on the podium tonight, looking slightly embarrassed by this big kiss from mum Marianne. She has a right to feel proud of her son, who is heading for victory on Sunday. Yes, a tremendous result for Australian road cycling. Neil Stevens, the first Aussie to win a stage in the Tour de France since Phil Anderson back in 1991. He is the talk of the town right here in the Tour de France, and rightly so. It's been a long time coming, and steve has done it. We spoke to him as soon as he crossed the line. Yeah, you know, it's not very often that I get that I get the, the liberty to work for myself. Uh, you know, I've done it last year. I crashed when coming into the finish. Uh, a couple of years before that, I I, um, I got beaten by Rolf Sorens in the finish, and today everything sort of came out right, and I got the victory. Well, what is it? 13 years of hard work finally paid off. Yeah, I know this has to be the greatest uh, day in my sporting career. Uh, you know, it's obviously the biggest race in the world, and so uh, yeah, I'm really really happy. Well, go through that last couple of <laughs> kilometres with us. Yeah, basically I was the first one to attack, you know, with about five or six k to go. I, everyone started attacking, moving around, and I just waited for the right moment. Ek, uh, Ekimov was attacking, riding on the front, and uh, I just waited for a little moment when he stopped, and I attacked. And uh, everyone basically started looking at each other, and uh, about oh, 750 metres out, I knew this was mine. Well, could you believe when you crossed the line by yourself? Oh, you know, I think, looking at the group that I was with, there were some pretty quick guys there, and uh, I think that if I hadn't gone, on, gone over by myself, I wouldn't have been able to win it at all, so uh, that's the only way I could do it. Well, Steve, most of the attention early on has been on the young Australians. How much of a role do you think you've played on them, and vice versa? Oh, you know, we have a great, we have a great time, us boys. You know, we get in, sometimes we have a coffee in the morning together. Lots of times we roll along having a bit of a yarn when, when there's no attacks going on. Pardon me. <laughs> Champagne. <laughs> and, um... Anyway, yeah, it's, it's great to have the boys in the bunch, and they're a great, uh, great, they're great guys, and they're, they've got, certainly got a uh, bright future ahead of them. Now, you were thinking, uh, we were talking about retiring next season. Will this perhaps extend your career? Oh, no, you know, uh, there's times, there's lots of things I want to do in my life, and uh, maybe this time next year I'll think about what I want to do, but at the moment uh, I've got another year with Festina, so I'll, I'm sort of pretty relaxed about it. But it seems to me the, uh, the, the longer you carry on, the better you get. Yeah, like an old wine, but... Uh, but sometimes the wine turns to vinegar, so I want, to, I, want to, I want to put the bike up before that happens. Neil Stevens, certainly one of the true characters of the Tour de France. He's been riding since the early to mid-80s. He's well-liked from all circles. He comes from the Basque region around San Sebastian in Spain, speaks French, speaks Spanish, speaks Basque, and because of that Aussie character, everybody here loves him, I can assure you. Well, let's just go to the results of today. Jan Ulrich, still the overall leader in the general classification. But have a look at the stage results. Neil Stevens of Australia, he's finally cracked it. Until tomorrow, this is Mike Tomolaris. Good night. Uh, in front of uh, such, a, such a field, it's, it's a fantastic room and uh, all the very best. Yeah, when I, once I got to uh, about four or five hundred metres out, I looked at the bunch who was behind and looked at the finish. I thought, well, I'm closer to the finish than, than the bunch is to me. And so uh, I thought, I've got, I've got this one and I, I did the right things. I, done me, I did my shirt up. I made a little sign to say thanks to my wife and thanks to my baby for, uh, yeah, for, for, for putting up with me, basically. And uh, it's a great day, it's a great day for me.